Uh, we need to talk about this problem. If you watch my most recent review on this controller, you know how much I like it. The top part seemed fine on this left joystick, but as you moved it near the bottom left corner here, it would stick. It almost felt like it was falling into like a little notch. Now this controller has been my primary controller for the last month, so it's strange that I've just noticed this now, but it is really, really hard to play when this gets stuck in this little notch like this. I reached out to Gully Kit to see what they said about this. They've sent me a replacement joystick, but I'm going to open this up just to see if I can fix it without that extra part. It's a horrible shame to see this on my favorite controller, but let's open it up and see if we can fix it regardless. Flipping the controller over on the back, you can see there's four screws, so we need to take these out before we can open the controller. Because this controller has a decent seam around the edge to open it up, you shouldn't need to stick anything near the triggers or the joysticks. You should be able to open it up directly from the sides. The plastic on this controller is pretty soft, so we got to be careful when opening this to make sure we don't get any scratches. Grab a throwaway card you're not using, and we're going to be using that to open the device. So because I don't want to get any scratches on it as well, I'm going to be tossing a microfiber cloth over the card to protect around the edge. I personally wouldn't use a nice microfiber cloth because you can wreck it when you're opening the controller. So I tried going through the bottom part here with the microfiber cloth and the card. It didn't really work immediately, but I eventually got it open. Eventually I just put the microfiber cloth down and used my fingers to open it here. Once it started, we had to go around to the other side to open it more. Be extremely careful when opening it. There's no clips here at the bottom part, immediately on the bottom, but up near the top, near the side, that's where you're going to have a lot of problems with the clips. They're very small and they're really, really thin, so you can break them quite easily. I got the card in, so I'm going to slide it up here near the edge, just ever so gently, until I can get that up. And you'll hear it click near the top, that's where the clip is. This next part requires a little bit of force to get it open. Just push the bottom, and then lift up on the top, and it should pop right off. This was really disappointing to see, but I actually broke one of the clips on the right side, trying to get it open. Kind of disappointed about that. With the back off, you can see the controller and all its layout here. So this is what it looks like inside of the Gully Kit controller. This part was kind of cool. I thought I'd show you guys. So you can actually see the magnet in the hall sensor trigger. The other trigger has a little bit of shielding around the board where it makes contact, so that was kind of interesting to see. Down on the bottom here, you can see the rumble motors on the controller. There's two of them here. They're pretty decent, but they're nothing to write home about. Up top, you can see the battery. So it is a 1000 milliamp hour battery, and here's the model number and the date on my battery. The next thing you want to do is to remove the ribbon cable on the main board here. So let's pop that up with our finger and pull the main board controller out. Shouldn't need to worry about damaging the ribbon cable here. It's pretty easy to get out. The rumble motors can come out next. All you have to do is just put your finger on each side and wiggle it back and forth until it pops out. This one's a little harder to get out because the plastic is kind of right on the edge, so you can't really get your finger in there at a good angle. Be careful when pulling this out that you don't pull from the cable. If you pull from the cable, you will rip the cable out. These are awfully thin cables.
After that, the next thing we need to do is take out the screws holding the mainboard in place. Personally, I would recommend pulling out the shielding first, so take the two screws off that, then lift out the shielding before proceeding to the rest of the screws. The main board is seated on two uh, little posts here on the left and right, so it does take a little wobbling to get it out, but it will come off pretty easy. As you can see, I did not pull the shielding out first, and that's why I would, because it's just going to stick to this magnet, and it's going to be harder to get off. The way this controller is designed, it actually makes it very hard to remove this controller uh, motherboard here. These two triggers are in the way. You can remove the triggers, but to remove the triggers, you need to move this uh, mainboard back a little bit. The screws that are holding the triggers in actually are blocked by this motherboard. Pulling out this board can be a little bit of a pain. Personally, I try to take the screws out first, lift it back a little bit, and then try to take off these triggers because it would make it a lot easier to pull this out. I'm trying to navigate around these triggers and pull it through the holes at the same time. Eventually I did get it out, but that was no easy task. I definitely would have found that easier to take those triggers off first. Having pulled that out, you can see the buttons are now removable. You can just push them through and they'll come out. So here's a close-up of what the buttons actually look like on the Ghoulie Kit controller. This is definitely another selling feature of this controller is these fantastic buttons. Let's take those out next and get those out of the way. It's kind of neat, these actually sit on like a little guide rail. We can take these triggers out now since they're in the way. Personally, I would have recommended removing these earlier. Here's a little bit of a close-up of what the trigger looks like. You can see the little spring there as well. By far, this is my least favorite feature about this controller is these clicky bumpers. We can go ahead and remove the battery now as well. Be extra careful when removing this cable. Let's remove that second trigger as well. With the triggers and the battery out of the way, we can now take out the second main board.
Be extra careful not to damage these switches at the top when removing this main board. Pull the board up evenly and it should come out okay. It did take me a little bit of wiggling to get it out, but eventually I got it out okay. Having removed the second motherboard, you can see where the rubber membrane is for the D-pad and the buttons on the front. You can also pull that off quite easily if you want to take a look at that. You can also remove the D-pad here if you need to replace that. Reinstalling it, just make sure you line it up with this little notch in the corner. The bumpers just slide right off. All in all, I've been really impressed with the quality of the plastic and the mold on this controller. Here's a close-up of those switches I don't like on the bumpers and the board that they're attached to. Flipping that over, you can see where the button connection points are. That aside though, let's take a look at the problem in this controller and how to fix it. With the joystick over here, you can take a look and see this is where it was actually rubbing on the controller and that's kind of why it felt like there was a notch in it, because there is. This is not due to damage or wear on the controller, this is just the mold that they use when making these. Obviously when making anything, slight variances are going to occur and your model might not have this issue. With the controller open though, I did want to take a look and make sure that the joystick was fine. So the joystick does seem very smooth, it's just the cap here, so we can try to take a look at fixing that. Luckily, it wasn't on any of the other sides, I only have it on one side, and that's just from the mold that they use, as mentioned. Now, quality control issues like this that affect one of the main selling points of the controller are not something that you want to see, especially on a premium controller. I'm going to be using a very fine Dremel sanding wheel to try to fix that and take some of that issue off. I'm barely putting any pressure on when I'm sanding this, so just be careful, you don't want to take any off that you don't need to, and you want to make sure to only get the very bottom so you don't see it on the sides. You're probably going to have to do this a couple times, and just take your time going slowly. You only want to take a little bit, and you only want to take as much as you have to. I'm going to use a microfiber cloth here to wipe off any extra flakes so they don't get into the joystick itself. I can already tell after a few attempts this is a lot smoother than what it was when I started. Keep wiping off any of these extra flakes as we go so we don't get that stuck in the joystick itself. You could also use a small file here. Unfortunately, I don't have one that would fit between this controller and the joystick cap. Looking at it from the side here, you can see that that should be probably good enough. I think that will fix the problem. 
test the joystick one more time just to make sure it's still smooth and it looks fine. So we're probably good to go on that joystick. I'm also going to go a little OCD here and just go back and just take a little bit more off. And I think that it should be just perfect. I don't recommend doing this, but I did a little bit of the side. I just didn't want any of that overhang kind of on that controller as well. Not perfect, but it's definitely usable, so we'll try to make that work. When you're done that side and you're happy with what you've done, just make sure to wipe it off with a microfiber cloth one more time just so it doesn't fall into the joystick and you're good to go. Because I want these controllers to be as smooth as possible, I'm going to take a look at the other side and try to fix it. I did notice it on the other side as well. It wasn't causing issues, but let's fix the problematic side and the other one while we have it open. Compared to the other one, you can see this one doesn't look as bad, but this is actually the joystick that was having issues, so we want to fix both of them while we have it open. This one probably doesn't need as much sanding, so let's just sand that down and try to get that smoothed out. This side actually turned out a lot better than the other one. I think these are both going to be absolutely great when we put this back together. Make sure to give the joystick a little test to just make sure it still works good and it feels smooth still. It should feel great and we're ready to put it back together I think now. Lastly before we put it back together I thought I'd show you guys what these look like from the side just so you can see that these hall sensors and kind of how they operate. It's pretty cool. It's a complete shame seeing a quality control issue like this on the main selling feature of the controller. When you buy a hall sensor controller, you want the joysticks to work well. Going back to what I said in my main review for this controller, these joysticks feel completely different from your typical mechanical controller. It's nice to see that they're fixed now. As far as these issues go, I did actually reach out to Gully Kit and share my findings, so hopefully this is not going to be seen on future releases from them. Putting this controller back together honestly is a, quite a pain to deal with. Everything that goes in has to be put in at the same time as something else. So as you're putting this motherboard back in, make sure to stick these buttons up here before you put it down. You can't put it in and then put the motherboard in though, because it'll hit these little switches. Just before you put the board down the whole way, lift it up a little bit, put those buttons back in, and then slot it down. Give it a little push when the buttons are in, and you should be good. If the bumper came out of the rail it's in, just lift it up a little bit and put it back in that little slot and it should fit right back in.
After reseating the bumpers, just double check them to make sure that they both work good. Before sticking the controller joystick board back in, make sure to put your A and B buttons back in because it's going to be impossible to put those with that joystick board already in. As this is a Nintendo Switch style AB layout, just make sure to put them in the correct slot and they should slide right onto the rails. Don't tilt the controller because if you tilt the controller the buttons are going to fall out and you're going to have to take out the next main board just to reorient the buttons. As much of a pain it is to put these in before you put the other motherboard in, you have to put them in first because they sit underneath the other board. You might have to pinch the trigger a little bit here just to put the screws back in because it will extend the entire way and that makes it very difficult to screw them back in with it fully opened. As you tighten the joystick here you'll notice it go down until it's in line with the controller. Give it a quick test just to make sure that the trigger works good, and mine seems to work fine. Line up the other trigger and install that one as well now. Make sure to hold the trigger together. It's a lot easier to install that way. As you can see with it fully opened, it makes the screws hard to hold on, and it's also hard to install it. The screw I had here wasn't going correctly, I realized it was the wrong one, so I had to pull that off, find the right screw, and then reinstall the trigger again. These are definitely one of the hardest parts to install just because of the way that they're oriented with the bumpers on like that. I did eventually manage to get it on there okay, and just double check both the triggers to make sure that they work. I did make a little mix up here. I thought that because I couldn't put the board on because the triggers were blocking it, I would have to put the triggers on after. Just a forewarning. Make sure to install the triggers before putting on the joystick board because it's impossible to do afterwards. After you've installed the triggers, next just put the battery on. Be careful when installing this that you don't wreck the plug itself. Make sure it goes in, it only goes in one way.
There are two little seat posts here that correctly orient the battery and hold it in the spot on the board. This next part is a little bit more difficult with the triggers installed, but once you have the triggers installed, it will go on. Just make sure to screw down the battery first so it's a lot easier. There's one screw just at the left of the battery on the yellow side. I also noticed one of my buttons here wasn't correctly oriented, so I just moved it around and lined it up properly before putting the board back down. Under the holes where the two screws sit on the left and the right, you'll notice that there's a little seat post. That's where this motherboard sits. Just make sure that they fit onto the seat post before putting the screws in. I'll speed up this next part so it's a little quicker for you guys. This is just me putting in the screws on the main board here. At this point, there's not much left to do. All we have to do is just reattach the ribbon cable and the two rumble motors on the sides. And that's it. You might also have to double check to make sure that you put the right screws in the right holes. I actually put a couple in the wrong spot, so I had to take these out and reorient them. Don't forget about the screw by the battery. Just a helpful note for anyone attempting this, it's always helpful to take pictures as you're taking things apart just so you know which screws go in which holes and how everything sits. At this point, let's make sure to put the ribbon cable back in and attach those rumble motors now. These can be a little tricky to install, especially with the rumble motors right there. Just make sure to push in the middle with your nail and it should go right in. Because the ribbon cable is now attached, you can accidentally turn on the controller. Just double tap that to shut it off if it pops back on. The last thing we need to do is just put the back plate on. Make sure everything's on and everything's screwed in before putting that back plate. Don't put it the whole way down. You need to put the trigger locks inside the cover before sealing it. The controller itself does require a little bit of force to close. Just make sure that you're pushing where the locks are and that the triggers are both in. Most noticeably, the locks are in the bottom middle part, just underneath the model number and on the left and right side near the top. It'll just click in once you push it.
Don't worry too much if you have to take it off multiple times, just make sure that you get it on there okay. And make sure the locks line up. Gully Kit themselves could fix this issue if they just double check all their joysticks before shipping them out to the consumer. Out of all the controllers that I've taken apart and put back together, this is probably the hardest one. Once you get it snapped on, just double check the triggers to make sure that they're working okay. If you're curious if your controller has been affected or not, you don't need to take apart your controller to see the issue itself. I'll leave a timestamp in the description below to the old video showing what it looks like. At the time I didn't know what it was and the company just told me it was a little piece of metal. Both of my controllers have this problem visible from the outside, so I'm assuming that the other one's going to have the same issue and it'll have to be opened up at some point. I'm curious to see how widespread this issue is, so if you have it on your controller as well, let me know in the comments below. Hopefully my two cases are isolated issues and this doesn't become a big problem with a lot of Ghoulie Kit controllers in the community. When I reached out to Ghoulie Kit last time about the trigger squeak on my last controller, they did say that they would be willing to pay for a repair from a local store, but unfortunately there aren't any controller repair stores around here and I was comfortable with taking it apart myself. They did also mention that they would give me a discount on a new controller or that they would pay to ship it back to them and then I could have a new one sent out. I'm lucky my trigger squeak went away, but the customer service from Ghoulie Kit definitely seems to be there and they seem to be accommodating with their customers. After putting back together my controller, you can tell that the joysticks are a lot smoother than they were before and I'm happy to report that this has completely fixed my controller issue. Hopefully this helped you too, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the description below and I'll try to help you the best I can. Thanks for watching.